Now, let's move on. If you think all movies are made on mega multi-million pound budgets, you would be wrong. Yeah, Martin Lewis has been investigating in this week's California Connection. <laughs> Good morning, Anna Nick. Martin Lewis here in LA's favourite beach community, Malibu. When you think of Hollywood movies, you think of big studios, big stars and big budgets. But there's another kind of filmmaking in this town. In a moment, we're going to meet some people who make an entire movie for what Steven Spielberg spends on breakfast. But first, more tidbits from the town of Tinsel. The American equivalent of Barry Norman, if they could be such a thing, is Roger Ebert. And he's just published this book, Ebert's Little Movie Glossary. It's a compendium of all the well-worn cliches, formulas and stereotypes from the movies. It's very funny. It mentions, for example, the fruit cart rule, which states that in any chase scene in an exotic locale, a fruit cart will be overturned. And this last one I noticed, the British Roman rule. It doesn't matter that the film is set in Italy, all leaders of the Roman Empire must have British accents. <laughs> You know how Hollywood loves a trend? Well, the latest fad is viruses. Dustin Hoffman's latest hit film is called Outbreak, and it's all about a deadly African virus that threatens to wipe out the whole of America in just two days. Fortunately, with the aid of a spacesuit, a helicopter, and a $40 million budget, Dustin is able to save the day. We have a very interesting problem. Movies such as Outbreak give a whole new meaning to the phrase, spare no expense. For example, the producers took over a whole town in Northern California to shoot some scenes. But of course, not all films are made that way. At the other end of the spectrum are filmmakers who take over their own houses to use as low-budget film sets. Producers of B-movies such as Century Film Partners. Century specialise in low-budget action movies that usually go straight to video. Films with all the formula ingredients. Cars, bombs, romance, macho film titles. What do you think of the title, Blood Vengeance? I think it may be just a little... <laughs> to in your face. <laughs> if you have a building explode, you must always see it explode from several different angles, often in slow motion. Tell me about that. Absolutely. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, because if you're going to spend the money to blow up a building, it's something you've spent a lot of money on, and you really want to <coughs> milk it for every bit that you can. Roger Ebert's book might label these scenes as clichés, but then these films cost just a fraction of the average $30 million that the big studios spend. We run around and do most of the parts ourselves. Right, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, no I, I, it's a matter of, of working efficiently and not having uh, unnecessary uh, crew members. They also save money by refusing to pamper their stars. Surprisingly, actors such as Sam Jones, who starred in the big-budget Flash Gordon, supports their approach. If we just spend the money on the necessities, then I think everybody will be happy. But once you start showing favoritism and, you know, once that actor has to have that size motor home, then the other actor wants that. And why didn't I get that? And then the next thing you know, it, it, it's not about making movies. It's about greed and, and me, 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 what I want. Of course, many big stars started in low-budget movies. Schwarzenegger, Jack Nicholson, Demi Moore, and Jamie Lee Curtis. So will Century's latest acting discovery, Tonya Harding, the notorious skater, be moving on to better things? She's a great athlete and a great person, but uh, as far as cameras and, and filmmaking, she had no idea. So we, we worked her out on that and, and uh, made her look really well. I don't expect much from you. I was kind of going, oh boy, here we go. Tonya, be nice to me. <laughs> she didn't go for your legs? No. No, she didn't. <laughs> a low-budget film can't afford to shoot a fleet of helicopters like the one seen in Outbreak. So how do they create mayhem on a shoestring? In our range, we got two cars and one we can't hit. So and they said, give me, a, give me a speed or give me a lethal weapon, and, uh, but don't scratch the cars and can you have it done by lunch? They may be making B-movies today. What about tomorrow? I think that we'll continue to grow and, and 10 years from now, Knock wood, we will be working with Dustin Hoffman or Arnold Schwarzenegger. I wondered how they'd fancy shooting an action movie set in Britain. You know, if someone called us up and said, you know, gee, you can have this castle for two weeks to shoot in, you know, free, 
you know, I would love to sit down and come up with some story that would work to just go make a movie in a castle. Well, British castle owners, if you're approached by two salubrious American filmmakers wanting to borrow your premises for the weekend, don't say you haven't been warned. That's all, folks. Martin, Cheers, thank you very much. Do you see that blue sky? Didn't it look nice? It did. And didn't that it? man was called Munchkin. Do we have any Munchkins in Britain, do you think? Uh, no, I don't really know. Do I'm let afraid. us know. It's a very difficult. 0121 415 5000 if you are a Munchkin. <laughs>